Welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. And today, as you've already discovered, I'm going to talk to you about the art of negotiation. So, I'm still in the beginning of my YouTuber vlogger career, if I can put it this way. But yeah, I mean, I'm improving on the go, and probably you have already witnessed the uh, change in quality of sound and i'm going to reveal you the secret how i've accomplished to do it hopefully it sounds that piece of shit as it was before and yeah yesterday i was setting it up trying to understand how to work around it and how to launch it and use it and then my wife came home saw me doing this and i'm gonna show you at the end of this podcast episode what it is exactly we're talking about here and she looked at me and said i had a gift for you for your upcoming birthday but i think it's time for me to give it to you right now <laughs> <laughs> to end this suffering. So yeah, there is entrance. So the reason I decided to talk to you today about the negotiation is due to many reasons. So recently I've been um, using various attempts into kind of make an AI a tool that would solve a lot of my questions and needs and I've been kind of exercising with it for some time and I found some really interesting information that I'm intending to use so one of uh, such pieces of information was that uh, based on my profile and based on my experience as a personality so I feed some data by myself and then ask the personalized uh, um, recommendation basically and yeah there are some plugins out there that would let you to connect to the entire i don't know like entire or not but the, the were numbers like 40 or 400 million of scientific publications and other publicly available databases so there are tools on how you can gather pretty much any data should you wish to um, acquire it well, yeah, I mean, as, as long as it's out there, it's public and uh, it is available. So, yeah, one of the ideas was to talk about the negotiation because it was still a significant part of my life. And I do it. I exercise in negotiation on pretty much regular basis. Whenever I see the opportunity, whenever I see a chance, I just go with it. And uh, it is important to remember that the negotiation, whether you want it or not, takes place in our lives and I was um, remembering while well, preparing mentally for recording of this episode a phrase by um, one of my ex-bosses and he said that um, shit what was that yeah so I admired his knowledge about wines and cigars and everything and he said I don't know much I just know five percent more than 95 percent of the people so i think on topic like negotiation i definitely know roughly five percent uh at least the 95 percent of the population on earth and yeah why not share this knowledge and i've seen many uh many of my colleagues well some of my colleagues i don't know many or not i mean the the, the company i worked uh at had like a couple of hundred employees if i remember correctly give or take so yeah at that point in time probably you know it's different a higher i guess but some people branched off and made their own businesses in terms of negotiation consulting or advising or teaching and then there are three books that are there behind me so those were the three ones actually the same book um two versions in english and one version in russian so it is a book by uh, steve gates 
uh, founder of the Gap Partnership. It's called uh, The Negotiation Book or Книга Переговорщика. But I'm not going to talk about it today because it is uh, very nuanced and complex, but the full comprehension of those concepts comes only after you've experienced it for yourself. Because you can read a book, that particular one, and get a grasp, get a feeling, get an understanding of a lot of... There is a lot of useful information, like shitload. But at the same time, once you've read it, some of the concepts wouldn't be that comprehensible unless you've experienced it. So there's this workshop, which definitely worth going to if you have a lot of money, that's run by the company. But today I'm going to talk about the other book that I've um, actually got from a, um, an acquaintance of mine. From Moscow, we met at a uh, festival dedicated to cartoons, and it was, when was it? It was actually 2022, yeah, exactly, so it was in July, I went to Russia to um, sign off um, some documents to sell off my apartment. So, I... There's been like a camp, like a festival happening, amazing atmosphere actually, surprisingly in the midst of uh, a war happening. And at that point in time, we had uh, uh, we were planning to stay in Lithuania for like for good, and we're still here. I mean, year after uh, since we arrived in March 2022. But at that point in time, it, it felt as if you know there there's some hope. So my wife, she didn't have a job, and uh, later when she got one, I uh, became her dependent basically. So, yeah, that's uh, how I'm staying here. Got a blue card. She has a blue card, and I'm as her spouse have a blue card as well. So, yeah, she's a talented one in our family. Um, and yeah, so there have been people, uh, friends of our neighbors in her apartment blog in Moscow, and uh, somebody had the variety of books with them. And I noticed a specific one, I was like, oh, hey, can I have a look at this one? And they say, yeah, sure, take a look. And I opened it, and I was amazed, actually. Because, uh, yeah, so it was translated from English into Russian, and by default, it is a book called um, The Hagler's Handbook, One Hour to Negotiating Power. <laughs> nice. The Hagler's book, Handbook, One Hour to Negotiate Power, by Leonard Coren and Peter Goodman. So, yeah, I mean... It's pretty good, like in terms of um, small specific advices and uh, ideas on what to do and what not to do in negotiation. But to start off, I wanted to go from far and think of concept of negotiation. So what it is. And negotiation is like extremely important nowadays. I mean, in all wars end up in negotiation at the negotiation table. And it some point in time that will that will uh, be inevitable and depending on the positions of the other parties depending on the size of the situation depending on what exactly they're trying to divide between each other or get to agree on certain specific items it may be felt as if more or less intense in terms of um body response and i mentioned well before basic uh response like fight or flight that's what happens when people are experiencing stress situations and negotiation is a stressful situation it's not gonna change ever i mean negotiation will be stressful you just need to fucking deal with it that's it that you're you can do nothing about it you cannot make negotiation less stressful you can lower the degree of uh, heatedness of the conversation but it's not what i'm talking about so talking about negotiation uh, if you just google stuff you can see a lot of people like key people in that particular field who are trying to take over this um, not narrative but emotional territory of the negotiation and there is one particular person out there fbi guy ex-fbi uh damn i forgot his uh, name and anyway just google you'll find it's chris voss yeah right that's one so 
there are like those types of negotiations. People uh, from that area they provide like very good um, concepts and explanations, and I'm gonna not gonna go there and take their bread from them. I mean, uh, probably I got a different audience, although I don't know which yet. I mean, don't have many views. I'm just recording it with the hope that at some point in time it's just gonna fucking work. But so far, it's not much. I'm an antisocial person. Not antisocial per se. It's just I'm not present in the majority of uh, um, public uh, social networks. So it's hard to get <laughs> initial <laughs> auditory going. Let's put it this way. But yeah, the, so negotiation, right? So first of all, you need to understand that it is a stress, right, for the organism. And the one thing that you always need to keep in mind when uh, negotiating anything is breathe normally and use your body to calm yourself down because it is the most crucial aspect. So if you go to the book that I mentioned in the beginning, it has a um, an approach, the like 14 behavior structure of a complete skill negotiator so the person to be like this complete skill negotiator needs to master all those 14 behaviors and behavior number one is think clearly in um, a conflict situation damn it's been a while I, yeah i think it's it, it, it is what it is but anyway uh, that's the meaning behind it anyway so the idea here is that this is critical, right? So just concentrate on breathing. In terms of theory, you need to understand that there are two types of like entirely different variations of negotiation. So one of them is called competitive, right? So I, I, I against you know somebody. Uh, it's a massive attack reference there. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this, but fuck it. Let's. So this is the first thing, right? So the competitive negotiation. Second one is collaborative. When you're like creating a bigger pie, as they say, and expanding the value of the deal. So just to give you a couple of examples. So you go to countries like, well, India, for instance, and you try to use the services of tuk-tuks. And tuk-tuks, I, I shown to you at some point in my previous episodes with the slightly shittier sound hopefully or <laughs> maybe better but anyway so those car uh, three wheelers that can take you um, to a certain place as long as it not like hundreds of kilometers or even tens but yeah so you come to tuk tuk driver and you tell him typically how to get or how much or you know i need to get here and then they say price or you say the price and this is depends right so in cases like this if you know that it is exactly how much it should cost or yeah you just name the price first and all the other options you hear them say their price and then just counter it with yours so you start to haggle so this is a competitive so for instance Let's say I need to get from one area of New Delhi to another one for, for the drive would cost me roughly 200 rupees. So I come to Tuk Tuk driver and I say this and uh, it says uh, 350. I was like, no, 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 no. So we start to negotiate and depending of what we agree would be somebody's win and somebody's loss. So whatever I take, the other person loses, vice versa. So this is why it is against each other. So we are basically fighting over each fucking step, right? Of, um, concession or like rupiah or you can use any other currency uh, probably rupiah is not the best one but what i'm saying is that here this is the competition right so there is another aspect to it uh, the other one is collaborative approach so collaborative or creative or however it's called so this is more about you know partnering up with the other party like you're working together you're interested in like long term you're not here for just do it right now and piss off and never see each other 
in our entire lives. Oh yeah, by the way, this is another characteristic of competitive. Typically it is like short term, so you won't be able to, you know, see this person ever. But there are exclusion, uh, exclusions, of course, here. So going back to the collaborative one, collaborative is about thinking what the other party needs. And this is, even though it may be perceived as less stressful, stress is still there. However, it is different in terms of how you feel it. Surely the majority of people would prefer collaborative approach rather than the competitive one, which uh, in some cases may lead to deadlocks or even stupid emotional decisions. So yeah, going back to the first behavior, always stay calm don't ever allow emotions influence your decisions in negotiations so if you are in the negotiation process if you are trying to agree on deal and you are i don't know whatever the fuck you're doing some people when they say negotiation they mean arguing or selling but selling and negotiation they're like totally different approaches so talking about that particular aspect is that what the fuck was i talking about about the collaborative approach of it and about the um, desire to work together to make a more profitable deal yeah right so in those situations when it can get heated in terms of discussion in terms of feelings or emotions first thing you need to do is to take a deep fucking breath count to four and then slowly slowly exhale and repeat like a couple or three or four times that enough to kind of calm down your body because our bodies are biological ro robots basically so if you're if you know how your body works you you can influence like states of your mind because it is intertwined and interconnected your brain is connected to your body so you can't they you know it's one organism so if you want to calm down you need to take a fucking deep breath and you'll be calmer but yeah just stay calm so the, the other type the collaborative type of negotiation is about more of a you know being kind of more friendly but firm on your interests it's not about giving everything to the other party it is about you know balancing it out and making or of course more interesting in your favor because i mean who would in the world probably be happy about a deal where this deal brings significantly more value to the other party I've seen situations where people fight over fucking three or two euro per unit. Depends on what type of unit, but, you know, in case of uh, furniture and negotiation in those cases, this is, like, just insane. I mean, like, producer and distributor, and they fight over fucking euro, and this is just insane. They did that block because they got competitive. So, yeah, in if you're making a lot of money and the other party is like making a lot of money the rest depends on somebody's ego or goals in life i guess so in the collaborative type of negotiation what you need to be doing is ask shitload of questions like a lot of questions and listen carefully you need to basically shut up and let do the talking the other party so they need to, to be the ones to do the talking but not only in collaborative negotiation in competitive as well actually but in collaborative it is way more intricate in way more exquisite way more complicated intertwined and whatever the fuck are the other words that could be used in this situation like this to express the nuances of it and there it is critical to hear everything, like what they're saying, what phrases do they use, like what specific ways of 
saying, like quotes, quote unquote, or how they say it in English. But yeah, like specific phrases can unveil a lot, like a lot. Accidentally used sometimes, but unless you ask a lot of questions, unless you try to understand what the fuck does the other party needs, because sometimes it is also a problem of um, interpreting not only the language barrier here I'm talking about in your own languages, the language that you speak, you communicate with people and with those people you have misunderstandings, right? Or you think that they need or want this, but in fact they want or need this. So it happens. It happens uh, everywhere across the world. We're all humans. And um, as you know, and in one of my previous episodes, I've mentioned the neuroscience study behind brain that confirms that we're all the same. So, yeah, going back to that one, um, it works everywhere, right? Yeah, I've lost my fucking thought here. So yeah, let me take a step back and um, talk about the book. So if you find this book and you open like specific pages here, you find very nice advices that would lie either in terms of like competitive style of negotiation or collaborative, but not only this, some tips and tricks and definitely would advise you to read it. It's like fucking good. So yeah, talking about those questions. So you need to understand what what the other party wants because yeah again in the majority of cases it could be that you may think something different from what they actually are thinking and then it may mislead you into thinking that this is the way you can agree to a deal whereas it, it is like something completely different so what you need to then realize is that not only you need to ask questions, you need to hear and understand what exactly the other party wants out of this deal. And then knowing this, you must not forget about your own interests and then make an exchange for something of same or greater value to you. And value is measured not only in financial terms or aspects, it's not like certain penny, dollar, rupiah, ruble, whatever the fuck the currency is being used and talked about. But that's a very different aspect to it. So I uh, I don't know what like to give you as an example because it is very nuanced and extreme. But for instance, once you are trying to negotiate a purchase of a sofa, for instance, well, probably not the best case, but anyway, if the value for you as a person who is receiving such sofa is in delivery and handling and making sure that it is like placed in your apartment. So it depends on where you buy it from, there would be different terms. And in some cases, you won't be able to negotiate the terms because the, those are the terms being dictated by the other parties. So like their delivery policy or whatever the fuck, or it, it could be government related, law related or something like that limitation. But in the majority of cases, the other party just dictates how the fuck they are going to handle things. And you just accept it because you don't have power. And power is very strong and complex concept in negotiation. It's not like physical power. It's not something related with sex or anything like that. However, it is typically, again, stereotypes and everything. Uh, people think that men are kind of harder negotiators, but I tend to disagree. I mean, women are like fucking tougher negotiators than men. And in, yeah, I mean, it's just probably because of the general bias that there are more men and women in like key positions in business and government in G720, whatever the fuck, G or organizations of country leaders. So this is the bias perception, and I've 
witnessed myself women negotiate out like performing men in many cases and yeah i mean i can definitely uh, speak from experience from my own and it's actually cool well not sure like quantitatively representative but yeah i definitely have reasons to believe that it is what it is so yeah in those types of negotiations you need to understand not only what the other party needs but um yeah where where does the value sit and value is something that you can use in negotiation so again for instance for the same like sofa and you know that you need the delivery happen and you know that they are kind of not open but they they can make it happen you can then use it and or negotiate some other variable that is of importance to them rather than to you maybe like payment terms for instance so if you like pay now when you have cash they can you know make the delivery happen because for the other party cash is more well although we're talking about value but yeah i mean it's amount of money right so you're gonna pay it either right now or over the course of the next i don't know 60 days if you deal with the banks and other financial programs and institutions so for the other uh, side it is of a great essence because of uh, cash flow reasons so this is how you can you know change the dynamic and make it work for the other uh, party and make it a win-win situation although in a pure sense win-win does not exist i mean seriously just let it find a situation where two uh, people or entities or whomever the the fuck they are came to the negotiation table sat at the negotiation table agreed to i don't know increase the total value by one billion fucking dollars and then they divided like in between i mean nah, seriously come on it's never gonna happen it's like tales for naive people who you know tend to think that uh we live in a uh, what's the proper word for here spravedliwy mm. not like just fair so there are people that think we live in a fair or just world but no definitely no i mean come on don't be naive here and i come from a place where i haven't been bombarded by like russian shells or anything however yeah witness 90s and i've told you a story in one of the previous episodes when an ice cream joint next to my apartment just got blown apart because of some you know fucking gang wars in 90s you know nothing special but yeah oh one other thing about the negotiation so the, it is critical to be assertive in terms of what you are trying to achieve in such negotiation so think of a situation where you need to agree on something let's say it's price so if you're talking about price and then when it's price you just don't ask the other party about will they accept your terms you need to tell them all right so be more assertive in terms of your terms because again in, even in collaborative situation when you are working with each other and sharing information and working together towards a common goal still you need to be assertive <laughs> and there's another the, because yeah again if you're making a proposal it's very complex and very structured and nuanced and then you say will you accept our terms what does it say about like whether or not you are sure about your position so if you ask if you question it i mean are you sure about your position so that, that gives an understanding to the other party that there is something that they can get more from you because you're not being certain about your terms so yeah that's why i need to be assertive here so there's another thing about the 
silence in negotiation. This is critical because in the majority of cases, people tend to think that negotiation is about, you know, I convince the other party or I over talk them or I provide them with the fucking arguments or some data, hardcore AI backed analyzed with, I don't know, millions of millions of fucking databases. And then they expect that the other party would sit there and reasonably agree. Well, I have bad news for you here. It's not going to happen. So, just again, going back to things that I've previously said, people are emotional creatures. All right. So, they they don't think rational and yeah probably mentioned but once you buy a villa in cyprus like frontline villa and the decision that you make is like not rational at all it, it has no logic whatsoever behind it and it costs like several millions or even dozens well not dozens in cyprus but anyway so the thing is that People are emotional creatures, and you are probably a human being. Well, actually, somebody is using algorithms, so that's actually a strange uh, how it's being perceived. But anyway, let's put it aside for the AI episode that is uh, coming uh, ahead. But yeah, so thinking about it is that people that tend to make emotional decisions and not out of good judgment right so think about the situations that have been happening with you in your life and things that you did in heated situations were was there ever a situation in your life when you made something stupid in need of the argument or your not being able to control your feelings and i made some stupid shit over the course of uh, my life and to some of it i do regret but not all of it so anyway that's not the point again it was emotionally driven rather than logically driven so then here again why the fuck am i talking about it emotion yeah Sh shut up and listen uh what the fuck was they saying ask questions heated discussion i don't know where i was heading with this really i mean if i just accidentally remember i'll get back to it but otherwise just put it in the fucking comments and tell me where the fuck was i heading with this and you know build a <laughs> build a bridge which i could use and jump off that fucking cliff there into another topic of discussion but yeah, by the way, if you somehow listen to this and you enjoy it, share, spread information. I do need some, um, where are the, oh, he, shit, fuck, here and here. Yeah, go there. Right. Um, I do need to make some upgrades. Uh, unfortunately, my cash flow is the best. And I'm, I'm going to reveal to you in like four minutes or so the thing that I've been using. And you'll be surprised. Like, seriously, you'll be fucking amazed. But anyway, so I haven't used any filters even. I'm going to disrupt an entire microphone industry. And actually, not me. I mean, it wasn't me who came up with this idea. I saw it on Twitter. Maybe I'll f be able to find it and then send over. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, the, yeah. So just wanted to give you a bit of a is storyline so my wife gave me this microphone which i'm gonna use as of the next episode but i just wanted to make a recording using this particular approach that i found out and i wanted to compare the quality because if it works it's just gonna like blow my mind at least but we'll see all right and it's like fancy nice microphone look at me so she uh, did this uh, research and uh, came up with a well it looks fucking good i i experienced uh using them uh some time ago and for various occasions i wasn't recording i had a 
like idea at some point in time to record a podcast they even recorded one episode but then they was like nah, no it's not it's not good i'm not gonna do it but it was like eight years ago or so and yeah the person who inspired me to do it in the first place was vasily strelnikov amazing guy so if there are people um russian speaking or those people who lived in russia in the end of 90s and the beginning of zeros they do remember the entrance of mtv and some key people and changes in the the music and the tv shows and everything that went along with it and vasily strelnikov was definitely a person who stood out i admired his art his manner this character personality and actually i don't know what happened with him i've been listening to his podcast for a while and then just stopped at some point in time and i don't know what happened with him I need to definitely google and check out because i'd be like honored to have a chat with this person he was one of the reasons that kind of shaped my personality in a sense because i remember those tv shows that i've been watching on sundays or something like that and yeah that uh that energy of that american born russian that was just insane that's like absolutely insane but yeah anyway so going back to the collaborative types of negotiations and uh heading towards the end of this podcast because i don't want to bore you i can talk about negotiation like a lot and i've been delivering workshops that would have lasted for three and a half days in a row starting with the tuesday 5 50 in the evening local time up until 10 or 10 ish in the evening and then from what was it eight to eight plus yeah for wednesday thursday and friday eight well eight thirty to five basically so yeah quite intense um so as you can imagine um yeah and yeah it's just a group of people up to eight persons typically um well, well there were others as well but um not talking about this particular one more of a topic of negotiation so definitely have a lot of stories to share and i can go to that topic and dig like firmly the problem is that i cannot identify like what the fuck should i be talking about to be this popular fucking vlogger and i mean i don't know why i've used that strange voice but anyway it's probably something they put it with uh by perception of the world or whatever so the point here is that my my wife she gave me the microphone she showed me figma and said yeah use it i'm like yeah yeah sure i'm gonna do it um not yet using it i need time and time is of the essence and uh, i got really big problems with time because i got shit a lot of things to do i'm not um you know doing it on time but yeah i'm working on too many strategic projects at the same time so yeah going back to the topic uh if there are like some specific comments or ideas or directions that you, you want to explore just throw it in the comments uh tweet you know i'm gonna register a uh, twitter probably handle and use it to engage with the audience so yeah just use it i was surprised that i'm the only the other russian on youtube which is like very uh i don't know why but it, it's it's pleasant thinking for me so i'm wrapping this up but before we go i wanted to show you what i've been using for the recording so i have a stand here and i'm gonna just yeah uh, like this there it is so yeah this is a um, apple's like microphone inserted in a sponge so there it is and i'm talking to it um so yeah i mean imagine uh technology nowadays so thank you for watching and be whoever you want to be see you next time